Welcome to How to Play Magic the Gathering. The premise of the game is that you, as a planeswalker, will use creatures and spells to defeat other planeswalkers for fame and glory. Each player, that is planeswalker, begins with 20 life and a deck of at least 60 cards. You defeat one or more opponents by taking their life total from 20 to 0 using those creatures and spells. You lose the game when you have 0 life points or can't draw from your deck. A few terms to get out of the way. Your deck is called a library. The discard pile is called your graveyard. The area where cards go in front of you is called the battlefield. To better explain what's going on, let's begin a game. You start by shuffling each deck and draw seven cards from your deck that only you can see. Your opponent is doing the same. To understand what happens next, let's look at the phases in each turn. There's untap, upkeep, draw phase, main phase, combat, your second main phase, and then the end of your turn. There is one special rule at the beginning of the game. If you play first, which we will in this example, you will begin in the main phase. This means that you don't draw a card on your first turn if you are playing first. You skip that first draw phase. You may play creatures and spells during main phases and attack during the combat phase. Don't worry, we'll go more in depth later. Now let's take a look at a magic card. There are two types of magic cards lands and everything else. We'll cover lands first as you need them in order to cast spells and do things in the game. This is a basic forest. You'll see its name in the top left of the card. Its card type is in the center of the card and a large mana symbol is in the box below that. Forest is a basic land, as noted, that produces green mana, one of the five colors of magic. The other four colors are white, blue, black, and red. Mana is the currency required in order to cast spells in the game. Different colors have different attributes, such as red being the color of goblins and featuring direct damage spells like lightning bolt. Black is the color of zombies and darkness and includes discard spells like mine rot. So back to the game. We've drawn our opening seven cards. So to get us going, we'll need to play something. Remember that we didn't draw a card this turn because we're going first. The most basic action you can take in the game is playing a land, which you can do once per turn. So we'll put our forest on the battlefield and pass the turn. We cannot play any more lands as we've played our one for this turn, and we don't have enough mana to play any spells, which I'll explain here in a second. So we pass the turn to our opponent, who then goes through the phases of their turn. Since you only skip the draw phase if you're going first, our opponents draw a card and then go to their main phase where they get a chance to play cards as well. They play a basic planes, which makes white mana as seen by the symbol on the card, and they say go. We then go through the turn phases again. We have nothing to untap, which I'll explain in a second, and then we draw a card from our deck during the draw phase and move on to our main phase where we can then play cards again. We play another basic forest, our land drop for the turn, and decide to play a spell. To do this, we need mana. You can think of mana as currency to pay for the spells we want to use in order to win the game. In order for the forest to produce mana, you tap it, that is, you turn it sideways, indicating you are using the land to add one green mana to your mana pool. Since we have two forests, we're going to tap them both for mana, adding two green mana to our mana pool. So with this mana, we will cast a creature. Let's look at a creature in our hand called Runeclaw Bear. You'll see in the top left is the card title, and in the top right is the card's mana cost. We'll get to this in a second. Moving on, you'll see the card type is Creature-Bear, the first half telling you what kind of card it is, a generic descriptor, while the subtype is Bear, which describes what kind of creature this card is. In the bottom right, you'll see two numbers split by a slash. The number on the left is power, it is how much damage your creature will deal in combat. The second number is toughness, which determines how much damage Runeclaw Bear can take before it is destroyed and put in the graveyard from the battlefield. The italicized words in the text box are called flavor text. They have no impact on the game at all. They are merely there to immerse you in the fantasy world from which this creature originates. Now back to that mana cost. The mana cost that you're looking at here means you need one green mana and one colorless mana. This means mana of any color or of no color at all. 
Remember when I said there are four other colors in Magic? They all have their own basic land types, and any of this mana can be used to pay for that colorless cost. This means that a spell costing two green and four colorless needs two green mana that is produced by forests and four more mana from any land type, forest or no. Two forest and four swamps will work just as well as two forest and one of each other type of land in the game. So with two forest tapped and two green mana in our mana pool, we have enough mana to play Rune Claw Bear that needed one green mana and one colorless mana. We cast the creature by simply putting Rune Claw Bear onto the battlefield. Now our mana is spent and our forest cannot be used again until our next turn. Since we've played our land for the turn and used all of our mana to play our creature, we must pass. Our creature cannot attack our opponents yet because it has summoning sickness. We'll go over this in a little bit. After we pass, our opponent goes through his or her turn phases again. They draw their card and go directly to their main phase. They then play their land for the turn, another basic planes, and tap both of them to add two white mana to their mana pool. They use this mana to play Silvercoat Lion. This creature is very similar to our own Rune Claw Bear in that it is a two power and two toughness creature for two mana, only in a different color and with a different creature type. They pass the turn to us as their creature also has summoning sickness and cannot attack yet. On our next turn, we go through the turn phases. This time, since we tapped our forest to play Rune Claw Bear, we will be straightening, that is, untapping, our forest during the untap phase. We then draw a card during the draw phase. Moving past our main phase, we're going to the fun part in Magic, combat. In combat, creatures attack other players to remove their life points. To begin combat, we will tap our Rune Claw Bears and announce that it is attacking our opponent. Remember Summoning Sickness I mentioned earlier? Since we controlled Rune Claw Bears from the beginning of our turn, we may now attack our opponent with it. We had to wait until the Summoning Sickness wore off, as it were. Summoning Sickness affects every creature in the game, and we'll go more in depth about it in a later video. So now we are attacking our opponent. Remember, you can't attack specific creatures. Rather, you are attacking opponents who may or may not choose to block with their creatures. Our opponent, who has a Silvercoat Lion, decides to block our Rune Claw Bear with their Silvercoat Lion. Remember that the Summoning Sickness I mentioned earlier only prevents you from attacking, not blocking. So at this point, normally these two creatures would kill each other in the combat damage step. A two power creature is being blocked by a two toughness creature. If a creature takes damage equal to its toughness, it is destroyed and put in the discard pile, that is the graveyard, from the battlefield. But after our opponent declares blockers, each player has a chance to do something. This chance is called priority. After our opponent blocks, we have a trick, an instant card called Giant Growth. Let's look at Giant Growth for a second. This is an instant card. This card can be played at any time during anyone's turn in which you have priority, that is the chance to do something. After you play an instant card, you apply its effects and you put it into your graveyard. So to play Giant Growth, we tap one of our forests to add a green mana to our mana pool. We then announce that we're playing Giant Growth targeting Rune Claw Bear, as Giant Growth says target creature, and we have to tell our opponents which creature this pertains to. This gives Rune Claw Bear a plus three plus three bonus until the end of the turn plus three to their power and plus three to the toughness, making the bear a whopping five power and five toughness creature until the end of our turn, easily large enough to kill our opponent's two power and two toughness silver coat lion. When we go to the combat damage step, they will trade blows, where combat damage happens with all creatures simultaneously. Suddenly, Silvercoat Lion deals 2 damage to the 5 Toughness Rune Claw Bear, and Rune Claw Bear deals a whopping 5 damage to the 2 Toughness Silvercoat Lion, more than enough to destroy it and send it to the graveyard from the battlefield. With a dead Silvercoat Lion, our 5-5 five five Rune Claw Bear now has 2 damage on it from Silvercoat Lion. This damage, along with Giant Growth's plus 3 plus 3 bonus, will wear off at the end of the turn. The damage and bonus effects wear off at the same exact time, so our Rune Claw Bear will live on as a 2-2 to fight another day once our turn is over. We pass our turn, and our opponent begins the turn phases again. The untap, the drawing a card, 
They then play nothing and decide to pass their turn to us again. On our turn, we untap what are called our permanents. That means cards on the battlefield. Then draw a card for our draw phase and go straight into combat to attack our opponent with the Rune Claw Bear. With no blockers, our opponent must take the damage, going from 20 to 18 life. On our post-combat main phase, also known as our second main phase, we will play our land for the turn and then play a sorcery card for two mana called Rampant Growth. This is a two mana spell, which you can see costs one green mana and a colorless mana. Sorceries, however, are different from instants because you can only play them during main phases when nothing else is happening in the game. However, just like instants, you do what the card says and then you put it in the graveyard. Note that we've already played our land for the turn, yet Rampant Growth tells us to search our library, also known as our deck, for a basic land and put it into play tapped and then shuffle our library. But we've already played our one land for the turn. Isn't this illegal? No, it is not. The key to magic is this. If the card says something that supersedes the rules, the card wins. If a card says to draw cards or put additional lands into play, that's what you do. We'll see this in action more as we continue this series. So now you've learned some basic terms. How to win the game, the phases of a turn, playing lands, casting creatures, casting instants and sorceries and the difference between them, and attacking and blocking. Join us next time when we cover two more card types, artifacts, and enchantments. Until then, head on over to StarCityGames.com for all your Magic the Gathering needs.